All right. For the last part of this week, I would like to go over one example using a loops and array in detail uh, in the context of a utility class and also to write some JUnit tests, uh, making sure it is correct. There will be quite a few, of, uh, quite a number of details I would like to show you using this example. I'll do the best I can. Uh, before I start, I would like to, as usual, suggest to you about some extra practice that I highly recommend you actually complete. Okay, very quickly. Uh, number one. Uh, as usual, I got this particular uh, Winter 19 Java tutorial, right? I've been uh, refer uh, referencing this uh, since the beginning of the semester. So far, we talk about arrays and loops. So I would suggest starting from video video 20 and also until 33. So that's something I also mentioned uh, possibly in your lecture material as well, uh, if you're from my section. So be 13 videos, uh, you don't need to watch them all uh, at one go. You may, just want, just, you may just want to plan your time uh, to really watch me one video a day, and then you can finish that within two weeks. So that will be very good uh, extra practice before you take your uh, next uh, programming test, which will be about uh, loops and arrays. And the second one I would like to suggest is this. Uh, in your lab guide, uh, you will be given also the guidance for your next uh, programming test, focusing on arrays and loops. And one of the, uh, and I gave you about three uh, practice tests uh, this time. And then each question there will be not so difficult. There will be so, uh, some slight, uh, some very basic and some very uh, uh, slightly more intermediate problems there for you to solve. For any one of the question, you will need uh, any uh, detailed walkthrough of the uh, solution, you can actually refer to this particular tutorial series. So basically for every uh, task over there, we got uh, 12 tasks uh, in total over there. You can uh, look at each one of them, uh, for example. The only uh, friendly warning I'll like to give you, give to you, uh, when I recorded this solution here uh, about three years ago, so it was not in, uh, not in Eclipse. However, uh, the lines of code which I provide in Java in this video here, they are completely applicable to your case. All right, so you wouldn't lose anything by uh, following the solution over here. But as usual, I, I really uh, encourage you to try to do the exercises yourself before you look at the solution. That's uh, uh, much more effective for your learning. Always struggle first before you uh, try, uh, before you look at the solution. All right, so that's about the uh, practice I'd like to mention to you. Okay, it's up to you uh, whether you want to do it or not. All right, I would like to do just one uh, method, uh, utility method, and then try to test it. And I'll illustrate to you uh, again to uh, review about all the basics that we uh, mentioned about array to see uh, how they can be applied uh, in real application. All right, so I'm going to create a new class over here under model and then say new and then class over here. We're gonna do, let's say we want to have an array of integers and then we we'll simply just want to calculate uh, the intermediate summations, the intermediate sums, and then return the output just as another array of this uh, of equally long uh, array uh, as an input array. But we'll see. Uh, I'll, I'll give you some intuition before I start coding. Let's say array uh, utilities. How about that? Okay, and then I'm gonna. So this uh, utility math uh, utility class. So no main method. You can just say finish over here. Okay, we'll create a JUnit test uh, in a moment. We'll do that. So now under array utilities, let's now uh, define the uh, method over here. Okay, as usual, it's going to be public, static, and now the return type is not something simply like an integer or string or boolean, not, not anymore. So now you want to get used to the return type can just be an integer array, for example. Remember, that's how you declare uh, a variable or any uh, return value, for example, this uh, so now we're using it for the return type. It would be an array over here. You can see the angle, uh, sorry, the square brackets over here. And the integers over here say, uh, uh, specifies that every member, every element in the array is integer. Okay, so we got integer array. Let's say get uh, intermediate sums over here, right? So, uh, so we're gonna get a sum for every uh, subsequence uh, or subarray uh, that's in the input. But I'll show you some example. It's uh, quite intuitive what you should really do. All right, and for the input parameter over here, I would say uh, over here inside a parenthesis, integer array. Okay, also you can you can see getting given an integer array, return another integer array. Uh, let's say ns for numbers, right? Okay, let's now just make th uh, things compile and then I'll start coding, okay? We can declare some variable, simply a local variable, just the same type as the return value over here. 
So I'm going to declare integer array, and then let's say result over here. So now, uh, whenever we talk about array, remember I mentioned previously, the variable, uh, the array variable is simply just going to point to the very beginning starting address of the array in the memory, right? So now what will be the default value for any address? So we're going to talk about this uh, special keyword called null uh, after the reading week when we uh, stop talking about objects. But for now, I'm just going to write it down. The default value will just be null. Simply means the array variable stores uh, no address. You can think about this really no address, no meaningful address over there, but it, later on it will be stored some uh, uh, address for uh, the output array. That's something we'll do. All right. And then we get the return result over here. Okay, so that everything compiles, right? Pretty much like what we did before. Whatever return type you declare for the variable, and then you simply assign some default value to it. For integer, assign zero. For Boolean, assign false, maybe. And then for double, assign 0, 0. And now for any, uh, let's say for array, we're going to assign a null, meaning that you don't store any meaningful starting address for the array. Not yet. All right. Let me uh, tell you what the problem is over here. Very easy to understand. Okay, let's say, let's say for example, given, let's say array over here, let me use the uh, angle brackets here. Let's see if I got two, three, and four. Okay, the array can be empty, can be uh, of size one, can be of size two, can be of size three. It's simply indefinite. So you have to make sure when you program the solution, it must be uh, independent of the size of the array. So you, have, you want to make sure your program, programming solution is general enough. Given this, let's say return the sums for subarrays. So what, what are the subarrays over here? So the first subarray will be containing two only. The second subarray containing the first two elements, two and three. The third subarray containing uh, the th uh, first three elements. All right. So it will be basically it will be two, five, and also nine over here. You can see you can think about two is the sum for the first subarray of size one, and five over here is the sum of the second subarray of size two. All right. And then you can see nine over here is the sum of the subarray of size three. So the, the size of the output array should be exactly the same as the input array, always, just the same. However, when you calculate the sum, you can think about you don't necessarily have to calculate from scratch every time. So you don't you definitely don't need a nested loop. So that's why I want to show you. You just need to maybe have some variable to really accumulate the sum. So for example, the variable uh, uh, is going to be initially, let's say two after the first iteration. And then for the second iteration, you're just going to make sure this uh, value here plus the new item over here, uh, three, that's going to give you the new accumulated sum, right? That's kind of the idea. But I just want to give you one example here. So hopefully you get the idea. And then I would suggest before I start coding, you can feel free to actually pause the video and then to see how exactly to program this solution here. All right. Assuming that you maybe pause the video and you have thought about it, let's now see how we should program that. All right. It's actually very uh, simple for this one, but you can illustrate many uh, important things uh, for uh, later on for your labs and also for your programming test number two. All right. So I would say for integer for loop integer i zero. So now we want the initial value to be zero. So we can start, remember indices for array start with zero. And then i less than, and now uh, what's the maximum? What's the maximum index for the array? It should be, as I said before, it should be the length of the array minus one. So I can say strictly less than, or you can say less than, you can either say less than or equal to ns the length minus one. I plus plus. This is one way to go, or you can simply say strictly. So this is okay, or you can say strictly less than ns the length. They are both equivalents. Okay, uh, but people like to use this one here because you got less characters to type. Uh, to type. Okay, I'll leave that one there. And then we want to have some intermediate sum. So maybe I will, will declare one variable here outside the for loop. So that means. Uh, whatever very let's say call a sum over here let's say initially simply just zero over here meaning that i will be able to use this sum over here even outside the loop over here right that's something we also spoke about uh last week when we talk about the scope 
Okay, and then we also need uh, the output array, right? I would say later on for your labs and also for your programming test, there's a very important principle. Whenever the output array is actually, oh, so whenever the output return type is an array, it could be integer array, it could be string array, you always have to know what should be the, what, what the size should be for the output array. So you can, you, you may have to create some intermediate array, some local array, and then uh, after you have done with the local array, you can ask, get assigned. The uh, local array can get assigned to the result array and then return it. Okay, I'll, I'll show it to you. All right. My point is, you should always know what the size it should be. In this case, we know that the output array should always be of the same size as the input array. So that's easy. Okay. So why do I do that first? So here I can say uh, integer. I'll say sums over here. Just give it a different name. And that should be integer array, right? You can see the difference over here, right? You can see integer array. And then is equal to new. Let me use this notation here because I don't necessarily know exactly what the intermediate sums, what the members should be in the sums array. So that's why I just need to create the array of the uh, expected capacity. So what should be the uh, expected capacity over here? So I should specify something over here in, uh, in place of the question mark over here. What should, what should that be? It should be this uh, as equally long as the ns over here, all right. So I can say ns dot length over here, all right. So this sums array is guaranteed to be the same uh, equally long as the input array. If the input array is simply empty array, the sums will be empty array because this part here will just be zero. If ns is uh, an array of size five, in that case ns that length will be of size uh, will be five. In that case, I will be creating sums as an array of size five accordingly. Right? That's the kind of the logic. And notice one thing here. After line number twelve over here, as we learned before, is going to be an array of certain size, but every element in the array is going to be of default value. In this case, its integer will be zero. But we're gonna reassign uh, each element accordingly. That's what we will do. All right. Hopefully, you're still fine so far. So what I will do here is very easy. I just need to keep reassigning the sums array over here at the correct elements level. Okay. So uh, for this particular example, I wouldn't do too much uh, tricky manipulation for the indices, but I just want to show you what you may do. So you want to be creative when you actually solve the lab exercises. Okay. I can say sums over here at position i would be zero, one, two, three, four, all the way to uh, n is the length minus one is reassigned to, right, we talked about this uh, previously, should be uh, just the current sum. Okay, however, I might just need a current sum to be plus equal. Remember, it was initialized to be zero, so you have to increment it, right? So I can say sum uh, plus equal ns at position i, okay? All right. That's, uh, I think that will work. Let's, uh, what about gonna test it, right? Uh, let me just write it, uh, write it as a draft over here. All right, so after this, we want to make sure this uh, sums array will be eventually returned rather than just result. So there are two ways you can fix this. Either you simply modify, uh, you simply, uh, simply maybe say result, uh, simply retreat the result over here as a sums. Uh, what, I, what I could have done was I simply said over here, let me just show you quickly, and then I will undo. What I what I could have said was I can uh, I can simply say this, and then I will put a result over here. Okay, so this one will work. So ba basically, I'm just using the result array without this sums array. So I'm just using one single variable. That will be that will be one way to go. But let me just undo it, and then I just want to show you this one here. Just, uh, I want to show you some array reassignment, which will be also very uh, useful for you. Okay, so I would say I got result array. I also got sums array. I want to make sure eventually I want to return the sums rather than result. What can I do? You can modify this to be sums, for, of course, but I will do the following. I would say uh, result is simply reassigned to the sum. Think about what's happening over here. Uh, sums, or this sum over here. So sums over here is uh, pointing to the base address of certain array in the memory. And then I'm storing this particular address into the result. So that result is also pointing to the same array. That's uh, what's happening here. But I will trace it uh, when I, uh, before, I end the, uh, before I end the tutorial. All right. Okay, so that's about a solution here. And then I would like to test it. You, you can never be so confident that your code is simply correct. I might be wrong. 
Let me go back to uh, the package explorer here. Let me create very quickly. So new and then class under JUnit tests. I'll say test array utilities. Oh, actually, I need a JUnit test rather than Java class. Beg your pardon. So what I should do is right click, and then I gotta say new, and then JUnit test case over here. That's what I meant to do. Test array utilities. And then it should be uh, new J J unit four, and then say finish, and of course make sure you add it to the build path. All right, let's now try. So I would say test one over here. Let's now try to test it, right? Let's test the uh, uh, let's uh, let's not do the boundary cases just yet. Let's do the easy one. I can declare here. Uh, so. The test case we're going to do now is the input is going to be an array and the output is also going to be an array. So the assertion that we're going to use will be slightly different. But let me just show you, it, the idea will be to just the same. Okay, Let's say integer, let's say input. The input array, so now let's since we're going to do some test cases, so we know exactly what we want to test. Why don't we say 2, 3, 4, and 5. Let's say over here. And then we can say integer array expected. What do we expect to see? Eventually, eventually, well, we want to uh, know. So it's gonna be two, two plus three, five, five, five plus four, nine, nine plus five, it's gonna be 14. All right, you can see the two here is the uh, sum of the first uh, subarray over here, just two. The five is gonna be the sum of the second subarray of size two, right? Five and nine is going to be the sum of the third subarray of size three. And also 14 is going to be the fourth subarray of size four, all right? And then we're going to say assert. Uh, so now rather than assert equals, you're gonna say assert array equals, you're gonna compare two arrays rather than just comparing two simple value like an integer. Okay, assert, uh, assert array equal. Okay, that's what you're gonna type. And then I can say expected over here. And then we, we should really call uh, you can uh, several things you can do. I can simply say uh, maybe integer, maybe the result that's return from the uh, uh, method call. Utilities dot uh, get. Uh, sorry, array utilities. Array utilities dot get intermediate sums, and then I'm gonna pass the input over here, right? And then this is going to assign the result, uh, assign the return value to the result. So I'll put result over here. All right. All right. So everything compiles. And let's see if this will pass. Okay. You can right click on the class and then say run as uh, JUnit tests. All right. We got a green bar. Okay. Uh, let's do one more. Okay. You can try different cases. You can try. I want to do one boundary case for you. What if over here, what if uh, the input is simply just empty array? Okay. So if the input is simply just an empty array, in that case, we have nothing to calculate. So we just re return an also empty array for sure. Okay, that's what we'll do. I'll also trace this case together with you. I'll do that. And also it's gonna be, uh, yeah, exactly, yeah. That's it. That's how I created another case. Just copy and paste and then modify whatever it is necessary to adapt. And then I'm gonna rerun the JUnit tests. So now we got two test cases passing, all right. All right, so now we are done. Uh, what I would like to do now is I want to trace the code together with you. I want to do, uh, for completeness, I want to do on both the iPad and also on the debugger. Let me do the iPad first before I go to the uh, debugger.